Hey, what's up, Zach here. And typically when I talk about shoe of the year contenders, they are more on the flagship line, so the price point is a little bit higher. However, not the case today with the New Balance 796. This is a budget model shoe, and it is a contender for tennis shoe of the year. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And thanks to Tennis Point USA for sending me a pair of these to kick around in. If you wanna check them out, I will have a link in the description below. Now, starting in the uppers, the 796 reminds me almost of the Blue Shield 5s and Torneos, with it, it has a double layer toe cap guard on it, plus rubberized protection here on the inside where you're gonna slide. And what I really like about that is, is that double reinforced kind of upper material goes all the way up into the lace line. So you do get a really secure tie down for an upper that is otherwise a little bit more of a minimalist shoe. But the heel counter goes up pretty high, kind of locks your foot in these shoes. So for something on the much more like Nike Vapor line or kind of A6 Solution Speed FF2 line, this thing locks you into the shoe, maybe a little bit better than some of those models. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, the Dremel does bite through that toe cap guard layer, that first layer of it. However, because it is double reinforced and it has rubber here on the inside or medial side, we would really be dragging most of the time. The durability still is really good for a shoe this minimal. And like I said, unless you are someone that drags completely toe and you're dragging more kind of like on the inside, which most of us do, they'll still be just fine. And getting into the midsole teardown, this is an entire bed of New Balance Rev Light Foam. Now, what New Balance says it's 30% lighter than their traditional EVA foams like Fresh Foam or Fresh Foam X. However, it retains the same durability. Now, what I noticed is with the Rev Light, yeah, it does feel a lot lighter underfoot. But what I noticed is because it is a lighter foam, a little more of an airy foam, you do get a lot more kind of tactile sensation that is allowed to kind of come up through the shoe. So you get a lot more ground feel than some other foams, a little more dense underfoot. So I just did notice my movement felt so much more confident side to side, which I'll get to in the playability section. Uh, but even though the outsole tread is nice, it does have some good grip. It's the midsole foam and how much neurofeedback it allows through your foot that I think gives this shoe all of its playability characteristics. It does have a shank in it. However, it is very, very flexible. So like I said, these are going to be a little more of a flexible type shoe, but it, the amount of data that your kind of foot can gather from the ground and how much feel you can get from these is just second to none on the market right now. But I would say the most surprising part of the 796 is the outsole tread and just how rugged it is for a budget model shoe. Now this is a super wide, flat herringbone pattern. It's almost like the On Roger Pro. Uh, the tread depth is around two millimeters. It can get down to one millimeter in some areas. So it, it is much more meant for a hard court, really a hard court only. I wouldn't try to take these on clay. What the great part about this is, is it is a continuous bed of that flat herringbone. So once again, you get so much tactile feel on the ground and for side to side movement, these things are just one of the fastest shoes out there. Uh, and if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I didn't even get a millimeter of damage on these. The durometer or test of hardness of this rubber is at a 22, which is off the charts for any shoe, let alone a budget model. And since the 796 does come in widths, a narrow, medium, or wide foot can go true to size. Just go with your standard width you usually go with, and you should be just fine. I would say if you're somebody with existing ball of foot pain, in the beginning, these shoes are gonna feel fine. However, once that foam does start compressing, because the stack in the forefoot isn't so high, you might start to feel the ground a little bit. However, while the shoe is new, they'll do just fine. But just the one thing I noticed about the fit of the 796, if you do have a very high volume, high arched foot, you are gonna have to break in the uppers a little bit, just because they are a little bit more minimalist. Otherwise, the break-in is pretty minimal. Now, all the tech and material aspects of the shoe are all well and good, and a lot of other companies, as well as New Balance themselves, make shoes just like this that have similar types of properties. However, it's the playability of the 796 per ounce or per gram that really sets it apart from most other shoes on the market right now. Because when I first took these out of the box, I kind of thought to myself, this is gonna feel like a budget model shoe. There's not gonna be a lot of feel here. Probably a little bit more of a stiff board-like midsole. However, after 10 minutes in these shoes, I told my dad when we were playing, I said, these are gonna be some of the best shoes of the year. A lot better kind of prowling sensation on the court. Could get a lot lower. The grip was better no matter where I was on court. I found a lot of speed going side to side as well as front to back. I just had a lot more confidence in my movement. And it's not that they have a super wide lateral flange on them, or that they have all these bulky kind of upper materials. It's just the design of the midsole and the design of the outsole on these that allows so much grip, so much stability, easy to move through the air, but acts like a shoe almost twice the weight with the stability and the grip. So for all things being considered pound for pound, these just play so much better than just about everything else on the market. 
The only thing you gotta watch out for is even though that Rev light they say is 30% lighter, still has the strength, you can just tell it's not going to withstand the kind of loads that other foams are going to over time. And no, I did not forget about the shuttle test or the jump height test on these. I had them on an SSD drive that ended up getting corrupted on a 350 mile bike ride my dad and I took in the rain and all the footage had gotten corrupted and I had already cut the shoes open so I couldn't go back and reshoot it. However, the shuttle test came in at 14.61 seconds on these, which was really good. I mean, obviously I was just gripping the corners really well, even on a slick outdoor court. These things just allow you to retain so much speed on corners and not really give up a lot of that speed in the start and stop process. And if you look at the jump height test, it got 37 centimeters on these, which obviously isn't super elite. However, the shoe was new at the time, so that Rev Light foam was still giving me a pretty good spring back on these. I would expect that to kind of go down over time. Remember, these aren't track shoes. They're not meant for like a crazy launch on them. They're meant more for that side to side prowling movement, really kind of aggressive type movement sliding on a hard court. So I was actually a little bit impressed with that jump height on these. But like I said, that was with new foam. I would think after three to four months, uh, that kind of snap and spring in them will start to come down a little bit. But of course, I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you interested in something kind of going back to the more minimalist type shoes, more low to the ground? Or are you still sticking with some more of the maximalist, you know, kind of more heavy duty tennis shoes out there this year? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the older sibling to the 796, the New Balance Fresh Foam Lab V2, I will leave that linked right up above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next video.